Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to look at multiplication and division of complex numbers in their polar form. So let's go ahead and jump in. If we have two complex numbers in polar form, and I've labeled them here Z1 and Z2, and the corresponding moduli and thetas are labeled with their proper Z. So let's say if Z1 is R1 times cosine theta1 plus I sine theta1, and Z2 is R2 times cosine theta2 plus I sine theta2, then we have the following. Z1 times Z2 is equal to R1 times R2 on the outside times the quantity cosine theta1 plus theta2 plus I sine theta1 plus theta2. We see this here, this is a polar form of some complex number, and that complex number is going to be this product, Z1 times Z2. Now if we're doing division, Z1 over Z2 is equal to the division of the moduli, R1 over R2, multiplied by cosine theta1 minus theta2 plus I sine theta1 minus theta2. Now, just to say what's happening here, just to say it in words, what's happening is when we multiply two numbers in polar form, we multiply, we multiply the moduli and we add the arguments. So multiplying Z1 and Z2, I'm going to multiply the moduli to get my new modulus of the product, and I'm going to add the arguments to get my new argument of the product. When doing division, Z1 over Z2, uh, order is very important here. I'm going to divide the moduli but I need to make sure that whatever complex number I have on top, I have that same, I have its respective modulus on top. Whatever my denominator is, that's the modulus I'm dividing by. And in this difference, order is important as well, I always want to take the angle of my complex number I have in my numerator and subtract from that the angle I have in the complex number in my denominator. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a quick proof of this multiplication. If we were just to do this multiplication through brute force in these polar forms. I'm using the same Z1 and Z2 that we have up here. I can, I'm taking this whole thing here and I'm multiplying to this whole side here. I can rearrange it because we're just doing multiplication so this is going to be commutative. I can move this R2 in front of this block and I get R1 times R2 multiplied by cosine theta1 plus sine theta 1 multiplied by cosine theta 2 plus, I'm oh sorry, this is an I sine over here, plus I sine theta 2. Okay, now I can go ahead and foil this out on this side and I get R1 times R2. Now cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 gives me a cosine of theta 1 cosine theta 2 and I have an I sine theta 1 times I sine theta 2 so I'm going to have an I squared and we know I squared is equal to negative 1 so this is minus 1 sine theta 1 sine theta 2 and I'm going to add to this all of the terms created by foiling that have an I so the first term that has an I is sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 I'm going to get a little bit cramped here, so I'm going to try to fit this in. And then I have plus. My second term with an i is cosine theta 1, sine theta 2. All right, and we have our bracket here. Okay. Now, we have some identities here that we're used to seeing, don't we? I still have z1, z2 on the left. I still have this R1, R2. We can leave that alone because that's what we have in our multiplication already. But cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2, this is my addition formula for cosine. We know that this is equal to cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. And then I have plus i, and looking at everything over here, this sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 plus cosine theta 1 sine theta 2, we know this is my addition formula for sine. So this is just sine theta 1 plus theta 2. 
And there we have it. This is our multiplication formula for complex numbers in polar form. And we can do division in a similar way, but let's go ahead and look at an example of how we would actually use this in a problem that you would expect to see. So let's say that I have a z1 equal to 3 cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6, and z2 is 5 cosine 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3. So I want to find the product z1, z2, and the quotient z1 over z2. So z1 times z2, from our formula we know that our new modulus is the product of the two moduli. So this is r1, which is 3, times r2, which is 5. Then I have, I'm going to have cosine, and my argument of cosine is the sum of the arguments of z1 and z2. So this is pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 3 plus i sine. I know my argument for sine is always going to be the same as cosine, so this is also pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 3. Now simplifying this out a little bit, z1 times z2 has a modulus of 15. Pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 3. Notice this 4 pi over 3 is the same as 8 pi over 6, so I have a total of 9 pi over 6, which is the same as 3 pi over 2 plus i sine, and our calculations are kind of cut in half. I only have to calculate this angle once because sine is going to have the same thing here, isn't it? This is i sine of 3 pi over 2. So this is my product, z1, z2. And you can leave your answer just like this if it asks for polar form. Uh, if it gives you a problem in polar form and it doesn't specify how it wants the answer, you can always just leave the answer in polar form. If it specifies that it wants it in a plus bi, then we just go ahead and plug in. So this is, we're finished already, but as an aside, if we want the answer in a plus bi, I plug in for cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0. I have plus i. Now sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And so we get in the form a plus bi. This is just negative 15i. OK, now let's take a look at our division. z1 over z2. We know that we're going to have the ratio now of my um, moduli. So I have the moduli of z1 on top, and I'm dividing that by the modulus of z2. So I have 3 over 5. I'm going to have cosine. Now we're taking the difference of our arguments. But remember, we always take the argument of the numerator first. So my theta for z1 was pi over 6. And I'm going to subtract from that my theta of z2 which is 4 pi over 3. Then I have plus i sine of the same pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 3. Now simplifying this down a little bit, this modulus outside is just going to be 3 fifths. That doesn't simplify anymore. But I have cosine. Now pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 3, that's the same as pi over 6 minus 8 pi over 6. So this is a negative 7 pi over 6. And I have plus i sine negative 7 pi over 6. Now you're going to be tempted here to use the even odd properties of sine and cosine to pull out those negatives. Uh, it would still be the same answer, but for our polar form, we want to keep this positive if we can. This is our standard, um, our standard way of writing polar form. So if you're asked to find an angle between 0 and 2 pi in your final answer, instead of pulling out those negatives with even and odd properties, we can just add 2 pi to 7 pi over 6, and we get cosine of 5 pi over 6. Plus, and now we can keep this plus here, i sine of 5 pi over 6. Unless I ask you to do this in my class, however, I'm fine with these negative angles. It actually gives a little bit more information about what's going on. All right, so that's multiplication and division. And in the next video, we're going to generalize multiplication into figuring out an easy way to calculate the powers 
of a complex number z. We'll see you there.